Microelectrical mechanical frameworks, also known as MEMS, is the innovation of minuscule gadgets, especially those with moving parts. In this video, we'll show information of an escalated approach and framework for choosing reasonable assembling procedures and materials for microelectrical mechanical systems. For the most part, MEMS are scaled to be anywhere from 1 to 100 micrometers in size. MEMS were first proposed in the 1960s. Unfortunately, due to limited technology, they were not commercialized until the 1980s, when integrated circuits and circuitry began to get smaller overall. Today, MEMS are getting even smaller. So much so, in fact, that they're down to the nanometer scale in size. Although MEMS and integrated circuits, for that matter, are getting smaller, there are certain limitations that engineers and scientists have to overcome as they get even smaller. Moore's law is the technological theory that the number of transistors in a circuit will double every two years, but eventually are bound by atomic level limitations. The aerospace industry, the aeronautics, robotics, cellular, and even biomedical industry have all benefited from microelectrical mechanical systems. MEMS have the capability of being directly integrated into a device or system that improves the main device's performance. Seen here is the act of energy harvesting. MEMS are usually utilized in energy harvesting by taking advantage of mechanical forces that can be converted into stored energy. There are a few MEMS that are quite popular. The implementation of a microsolar cell, a MEM that's directly integrated with an integrated chip to harvest energy from vibrations, and even magnetic microelectrical mechanical systems that harness the magnetic field. Very small integrated chipsets, as well as limited real estate within the phone itself, are two primary reasons that a lot of telecom industry and phone companies use MEMS in general. Another primary example of a MEM is the use of RF technology. There are many nuances of MEMS that aren't necessarily that obvious, including how they're made, how effective they are, and how difficult it is to maintain or modify them. The pros of microelectrical mechanical systems, or MEMS, are they're very small, very light, and very fast. Micro switches are much faster than standard switches because of faster signal switching speed and phase shifting speed. The cons are they're very small, hard to interact with, Forces such as adhesion and friction can be very powerful in a MEMS and can, cause this, and can stop the MEMS from working. There is also a packaging problem. Due to their size, dust particles and other contaminants can be very de detrimental to MEMS. MEMS need to be packaged in a way that allows them to interact and sense the environment but keeps contaminants out of the system. Uh, there are three main ways to make MEMS. There is bulk micromachining, which removes chunks to make holes and patterns in material. There is surface micromachining, which adds on layers of film to create pieces. And there are molds, where molds of a part are created and a material is pressed or poured into the mold. The many ways MEMS are applied and used is only indicative of how versatile they are in a multidisciplinary setting. From there, a series of decisions must be addressed, including appropriate materials, additional specifications, and whether or not the proposed architecture and designs of the MEMS is going to be efficient. Overall, microelectrical mechanical systems are gadgets that both enable advantageous opportunities for engineers to optimize and expand already existing electronic systems.